We all know that a computer program is a special packaging of instructions that we write for the computer to do something for us. And this special type of packaging actually forms the basic skeleton of a C++ program. In this video, I am going to explain you the basic skeleton of a C++ program. I am also going to talk about making the library calls so that we don't need to provide instruction for every micro level task we can actually take help of library to do some common task for us uh, and we will also i'll also be discussing the concept of namespace which gives us the flexibility to take help of the library from different sources in case the routines of those libraries have common name coming up Hey, this is uh, Shubhrata Kumar De. I am a university teacher teaching computer science courses for over a one and a half decade. If you are a coding enthusiast and wants to know the tips and tricks about coding, consider subscribing and press the notification bell so that you don't miss any future update. Okay then. Now to explain the basic skeleton, uh, library calls and the namespace, I have already created a C++ project using uh, CodeBlocks IDE which by default contains a main.cpp source file and CodeBlocks IDE actually generates a default part of the code which actually prints the text hello world on the monitor. Now if you look into the screen you can see that the very first line is hash include IO stream or pound sign. Now this line is a preprocessor di pre processing directive. Okay, uh, this actually tells the compiler. Now from line three to line nine is the source code written by me, but it is also going to use something from the library, uh, which is represented by the header IO stream. Okay, so it is giving the preprocessing directive to the compiler that you need to consider the content of this header while executing the code which is written by the programmer here. The next line is using namespace std. So std is the name of a specific namespace where most of the routines, most of the functions that we use from IO stream headers are defined. So I'll be explaining what a namespace is and how to create our own namespace and why it is useful. But as of now, we are actually going to use the standard namespace. In short, it is called STD. Uh, so we are actually uh, including this line. Then we have int main parenthesis now this parenthesis actually tells that main is a function which returns an int. Int is a data type which represents a whole number and this curly braces represents the block which actually in this case used as the definition of the main function. So it defines the body of the function. So if this main function is called what to be executed so these two lines will be executed now in this book in this video i'm not going to talk about what a function is i already have a series of videos on c++ functions if you're interested please check the card somewhere up here information card now inside the main function the statements the first statement that is used is c out then the left shift operator then the text hello world then again the double arrow or we call it left shift or in this case extraction operator and the keyword endl semicolon so every statement ends with a semicolon and since the main function returns a number so which is an integer type so we are returning a number zero okay so 
what it signifies? It signifies that we are actually taking help of the library to print the text hello world onto the screen. And as a programmer, I myself not taking up the responsibility how to interact with the hardware and send this text onto the screen. Instead, I'm taking the help of a library uh, from the iStream header and the C out arrow arrow that means uh, this, with this operator actually uh, this is the directional operator you can think of so this is the text within the quotation and the direction is towards C out and C out actually representing console output so it actually takes care of sending this text into the physical device which is our screen and ENDL also defined in the library which represents the end of line so after printing this text on the screen the cursor on the screen will go to the next line now these two term that C out and ENDL are actually coming from the namespace standard namespace std so because these two identifiers are actually defined what they are what they represent are actually defined in the namespace std so we don't need to uh, declare it or define it in our program what c out is and what engl is it is already available in the Stay std namespace so we are actually telling that using namespace std and therefore this program will get compiled so i build the project and if i execute the project as you can see it is printing hello world okay now suppose i don't use the statement using namespace std i just commented it out now if I try to build the project again, now it is giving us the error, okay? So now it does not know what C out is and what ENDL is. So if you don't tell the compiler which namespace you are going to use, where the potential names can be defined, you can or we can actually use the namespace along with the name every time we want to use a name from a specific namespace so in this case since i am not using the statement using namespace std what i can say i can say std and this is called scope resolution operator so this resolve the scope of c out now compiler knows this c out should be looked for into the namespace std and so does so does with uh, engl so std scope resolution ENDL and now if I try to build it is perfectly fine and it is working okay so that is about the namespace now STD is a standard namespace that comes with the uh, I, I, the library the default library setup now if we want we can also create our own namespace now let's say for example I'm creating a namespace namespace let's say my math okay and open the block and within this block we define whatever the names we want to provide okay now let's say uh, here I have a function called print okay so return type is void and here let's say uh, I'm printing something associated with mathematics okay so for example uh, c out printing area of a shape okay and now i can add the other statements associated with printing area of some of some shape i'm not going to write that here now if I call this print from main now it will be an error 
because the main is uh, sorry the print is defined in my math namespace so it's not coming from the namespace associated with the project so therefore it is giving the error okay but if i say uh, my math uh, scope resolution operator and then print and now if i call the print uh, associating the print with the corresponding namespace which is my math now it will be built and executed so now it is printing area of a shape now for example i can have now why this namespace because uh, there can be another print function defined in another namespace so if we need we can actually use both the prints just associating it with the corresponding namespace while calling it so that we can avoid the uh, name conflict okay so let's say let me put another namespace uh, or instead of calling with the scope resolution i can also uh, tell that using namespace after the namespace is defined using namespace my map okay so that is also fine absolutely fine so i can call the print this way because now I said I'm using the namespace my math, so it's, it builds successfully and we get the output. So we can define another namespace and we can put another print there, but no problem. If we want to print that, that print, then we can, let's say the namespace is uh, utilities, okay? So namespace utilities, okay? And there also we can print, we can define another print function. So void print C out printing something printing from utilities namespace. okay 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 so this print this print is defined in utilities namespace so now if i call print then compiler will always print the always execute the print function of the my math namespace because we are telling using namespace my math but if i don't and and it will be built no problem okay so uh, semicolon so it is built and successfully it will print that printing area of a shape because of the using namespace uh, my math however if i don't specify which namespace I am using other than std then if I build now compiler get confused okay now there are two namespaces available to this program and both namespace has a function called print which one I should execute so now I can actually use my math scope resolution print or utility scope resolution print or I can use both okay so my math scope resolution print as well as my math scope uh, sorry utilities scope resolution print so now i am calling the print from the namespace my math and now i and, and and the next time i'm calling the print from the namespace utilities and in this way we are actually avoiding the name conflict because when a function has when two function has same names with same parameter list then it becomes a name conflict and it's not only for functions for any identifiers if we declare two integers with same name it will create a name conflict so therefore you are not allowed to do, declare multiple integers with same name or multiple characters or multiple doubles with same name however if we define multiple namespace we can actually use the same name within the namespace because uh, while using that variable if we specify from which namespace it is coming from then actually we can avoid that conflict 
okay so now now this will be build and execute and for the first print call uh, it will display that uh, printing area of a shape and for the second print call it will display the print is defined in utilities namespace so if we execute that now you can see so that is all about namespace next thing that i want to talk about is the hash include io stream now we could also say io stream dot h okay now when the c plus plus was standardized and that point onwards we actually don't use the dot h dot h is needed uh, for old program pre c standardization pre standardization of c plus plus era uh, at that time we used to include io stream dot h okay uh, but now it is standardized and hash include io stream actually suffice to get all the standardized uh, functions and uh, classes and identifiers which are defined in the io stream library another variation sometimes you can see that instead of hash include you can see that hash include instead of angle bracket you can see the quotation to specify the header okay so the, the difference is if you use the quotation it will look into the current folder where the project resides for the library if it fails to look at that then it will go to the default setup folder where all the libraries are supposed to be which is set by the installation of your id so eventually if you use quotation mark if the header is not found in the current folder it will look for the designated standard folder but if you use the angle bracket it will not look for the local folder current folder it will straight away look for the designated folder for the library so that is another thing okay so here what we have seen we have actually sent some text to the uh, monitor to the on the screen so that we, we could show some output to the user but we all we may also need to take inputs from the user from the keyboard so when you say console io so console input device is by default keyboard and console output device is by default the screen so here we have actually send an output uh, onto the screen and the content of the output is decided by the programmer okay so as a fixed literal okay so this the the text okay in this case uh, in main we are printing hello world so the content the text hello world is actually decided by the programmer and directly given for output so it is not coming from any memory location inside the ram however sometimes we can calc we need we may need to calculate some value store it in the ram and later on we, we may need to read the memory uh, content from the ram and then send it to the uh, screen for output or reuse it for some further calculation so therefore we actually need to use the memory to represent our data associated for our um, task that we are trying to solve now to understand that we need to talk about the variables and that i'm going to explain in the next video thanks for watching and for being with me if you like this video please give a thumbs up share with your friends and again uh, consider subscribing and press the notification bell See you in the next video. Have a good day.